So if you were growing up in the mid 90s or if you were a parent of a kid in the mid 90s, there is a name that exploded onto your television set before we had streaming, before we had smartphones, and now one of my personal heroes is part of the NBC family, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Yes, yes. How are you, sir? Fabulous. We have been trying for so long to talk to you because you have this new show on Peacock, but you're also here at Aspen. So tell me about what you're doing at Aspen here tonight. So we're going to talk about climate change and uh, what we can all do about it, how we can work together for a better tomorrow and, uh, and science writ large. So when was it that you realized that your voice was going to be most needed, most powerful in the area of climate change? Because when your first show was out, climate change wasn't the most important issue of our time, or maybe it was and we just weren't talking about it, and now you are. Well, I'd say it was that we weren't talking about it. So <clears throat> I remember very well when James Hansen testified in front of Congress in June of 1988. <laughs> And James Hansen, uh, he's retired now, but he was at NASA at Goddard Institute for Space Studies. And you could make a claim that climate change on Earth was discovered on Venus. You could claim that and get into a fist fight in the science bar with that. Can you explain that? Well, just that the role of carbon dioxide is very important. It's why uh, Earth has the climate we have here. Uh, Mars would be extremely cold if it weren't uh, for this thin, thin layer of, of carbon dioxide. Most of it has been blown off into space, but it's a little bit there. And Venus is all carbon dioxide, almost entirely carbon dioxide, and the surface of Venus is hot enough to melt lead, as mm -hmm. we say. So uh, I, as you guys may know, I took one class from this famous guy, Carl Sagan, mm -hmm. and he talked all the time about comparative pl planetology. Uh, comparing the climate of one place to another, one planet to another. And so this is, people were very concerned about climate change in the 1980s. And now you can go on the electric internet that the kids use. <laughs> you can find documents published by Exxon, in 19, referring to documents written in 1977, published in 1978, where the Exxon scientists were going, you know, if we keep this up, this could really, could be serious biz. And it mentions Florida and all these wonderful things. So uh, the longest journey begins with but a single step. And here's, we're taking another step. So let's talk about 30 years ago versus now. So your first show, the first show that I got to see, 1993 to 1998, here we are three decades later. The technology on your new show is completely different. We have different CGI. We have different ways of telling stories. So has that made it easier, more challenging, more fun? It's made it fun in a new way. <laughs> right. Yeah, when you have resources, you do <laughs> cool stuff. You know? So what we found out, and it's surprising, is it's surprising to me at first. When we have a global pandemic, People start renting the movie Contagion. You'd think they'd start re re renting romantic comedies, right, or but that's right. not some human nature. More disaster. Give me more disaster. So we made six disaster movies an hour long. Yeah. But the difference in the first half, the disaster happens and everything is uh, troublesome. In fact, it's so troublesome. How troublesome is it? It's so troublesome. I get killed in the first half in the first half hour. But then in the second half, I come, <laughs> come back. You come back. You come back. He's yes. You you survive. And we, well, yes, and we address all these problems with what? Science. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. I I got so nervous that I was going to come up with the wrong answer. The answer is always science. Well, not well. Often. <laughs> Let me. So the old saying: everything happens for a reason, and that reason is usually physics. As a meteorologist who always wanted to be on TV, I've got a lineage. I've got Mr. Wizard, who I know is a hero of yours as well. I've got you, I've got Neil deGrasse Tyson. You're doing it in different ways, but you all have this one thing in common. You've made science cool, understandable, fun. And do you guys ever talk about the influence you've had over making kids want to become scientists? Because all three of you have done this. Well, I try to get it. Uh, it, it it's overwhelming. Like We have a third generation of people watching the Science Guy show. Yeah. Like, really? We <laughs> were in a warehouse in Seattle. It's still there. You know, 25 people just messing around, trying to do something that was would be influential. The objective of the old show, at the top of the document I gave to everybody who came to work on the show. You know, it was a public broadcasting station. We had many, many interns, over 100 people over the years. The objective, change the world. 
That was the objective of the Science Guy <laughs> show. So, or is. And so that's still the objective. Now, you know, as uh, Carl Sagan said, I think a lot of people have said it, but he is also known for having said, when you're in love, you want to tell the world. And so uh, I think Mr. Wizard, Don Herbert, mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I love science. Yeah. And we want to get people excited about it. Uh, very excited to get people excited about science. And you know, what happened to me was, is I like bicycles, I liked airplanes, I came of age with the space age, with the Apollo era, well, guys walking on the moon. And then the United States created the Ford Pinto and the Chevy Vega. These were awful automobiles, they were terrible. <laughs> and I was embarrassed as a mechanical engineer. And so I wanted to get people excited about science and the process of design for a better tomorrow. That's still the message, that's still the goal. What is it in Miami, in the United States, that we are not seeing, that other places in the world have seen this idea that maybe other places in the world are like, okay, yeah, maybe there is a problem we need to deal oh, with, and, yeah. and maybe here, we're still not there yet. Well, what, no. what's, what are you seeing when you well, travel you the just, world? Just try to chip away at the problem. You know, if you have somebody, you would think, into it, a person would think, once you present the facts, we would all agree and move on and get to work. Right. But that's not just true of climate change, true of anything. You know, this, this is, I wanted to park my car here, the sign says four to six, and you told me 6.30 or something. You know, you get in arguments about facts. Yes. But uh, beyond that, it's, this, it's so troubling. It's, it's so, uh, the problem is so big that people get uh, what a friend of mine called the whimmy diddles. You just have so many things to do, you can't get started. Yeah. But let's go, people, let's get started. And boy, Florida, in the world's most influential culture, certainly if not the most technically advanced society overall among the top technologically advanced societies and we will have climate refugees we will have uh, uh, we will have economic upheaval we will have loss of real estate everybody loves real estate in florida but there's going to be less of it and so it's uh, uh, let's get to work, you guys. Let's lead. So, of all of the episodes that I saw of your new show, I, I saw all the episodes. I, let me rephrase, because I'm so a fan. I. I saw one. <laughs> the Ring of Fire, the thing that fascinates me the most when I was a kid, and I know when you were a kid, because I'm a little bit younger than you, you go to the library, you want to learn about tsunamis, you get a book, and there's a picture of a tsunami. And that's it. And Here, a kid that is 13 now that wants to be a weather person can go to your show or online and see a thousand images of oh, something yeah, I could never idea. see for oh, the yeah, life yeah, of me. Yeah. And I just think it's fascinating that here in 2023, we have access to science visually that we didn't have before. Oh, we had yeah. to go to the library and get books and pictures. No, no, yeah. You know, uh, if there are, there used to be a joke in television news. Well, I hope that doesn't happen, meaning the tape so right. the battery goes down. Right. I hope that doesn't happen when there's a car wreck, because you, you know trying to record a car wreck, car wreck was considered impossible. You'd have to wait on that street corner day and night for a week. Now <laughs> there are hundreds, maybe thousands of pictures of car wrecks every week, yeah. Yeah. and so now we can see tsunamis. We can see uh, uh, what happens before and after. Oh, did the earthquake in of course in Syria and yeah. Turkey? Oh man! Yeah. And so the old saying: earthquakes don't hurt people, buildings hurt people. So here in Florida, it's the word everybody throws around nowadays is mitigation, mm -hmm. is being ready for climate change, make, taking steps to be ready for it. And so that's going to involve getting things up higher and get a, evacuation plans. Well, you know, I'm not telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nye, I have to tell you, yes. as I was in college trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do with television weather, who I wanted to be on TV, how I wanted to present the weather, you did come along and inspire me to make it fun, make it visual, make it interesting, not take it too seriously, except on those days you have to. Yes, and so exactly. I want to thank you for being an influence, yes. and I'm so excited that we got to talk to you. The new show is on Peacock. There are six episodes right now. Yes. Any plans to do more with Peacock, or you want to talk about know. that right no, now? No, I, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Truly an honor. Thank you. So thank one you. thing to work on for you and me, for everybody here, yep. is the metric system. Okay, I've got no problem with that. We can learn to report temperatures in the metric system. I love we can it. learn it. Now, and this will enable us to remain internationally competitive. But here's the thing, it's less precise. 
Oh, what's the 22 and a half? You mean that's not enough for you? <laughs> I don't know if my boss would let me say 22 and a half degrees. We'll talk to Don when we get back to the state. Will you call my boss for me and let no, her know we're switching to no, Celsius? No, you don't have to switch. It's, it'll Just take 10 in. years. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right. Have what I used to call the metric <laughs> moment. Look, people live all over the world. You're right. Billions of people, yes. they get by with the metric You're system. You're right. You're right. It's not something anybody came up with like crazy. <laughs> this is where it came from. Right, right. I mean, ones and zeros. Or this. It's binary. People, well, it's 10. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. You want So room temperature, you want 22 and a half. Okay, okay. that's right. that's I, I can I can live with that. But if it's thirty, if it's thirty-one, it's hot. Okay. Hey, please keep producing. All right, <laughs> we need you. more Let's of you forever and ever. People. Thank you, sir. Carry Appreciate on. It. All right. Okay.